Barney the Dinosaur was a television character that is famous for giving the image of a happy family and for being a goofy purple Tyrannosaurus. While Barney may have had a great loving effect on the kids who watched him on TV, the effect that he had on the family of the woman who created him was less than ideal. From divorce, to lives being self-ended, to actual murder, let's look at the dark story behind the family of Barney the Dinosaur. Before we move on, I'd like to give a shout out to PDS Debt for sponsoring this video. How many of you out there were wishing that there was a better solution to pay off your debts? Maybe you're struggling with credit card debt, personal loans, debt collection agencies, or even medical bills. With inflation on the rise and gas prices at all-time highs, now is the time to get serious about a better plan to pay off your debt. If you're making payments on your debt every month and the balances still aren't going down, then this is for you. PDS Dead is giving viewers of this channel a free debt savings analysis just for completing the 30-second online debt assessment at pdsdebt.com slash diretrip. You'll get a full breakdown on how to save on interest each month and the quickest way to take care of your debt. PDS Debt rolls all of your debts into one low 0% interest monthly payment. Everyone with more than $10,000 in debt qualifies, and the cool thing is, there's no minimum credit score required. Fair and even bad credit are also accepted. You can end up saving thousands in interest and fees, and not to mention pay off your debt in a fraction of the time. PDS Debt is offering a free debt analysis to my listeners just for completing the quick and easy assessment at www.pdsdebt.com slash diretrip. That's pdsdebt.com slash diretrip. And now, back to the content. The author, producer, and television writer Cheryl Leach was one of the creators of Barney and Friends alongside co-creators Kathy Parker and Dennis DeShazer. Cheryl identified herself as a mom first, telling everyone around her how much she loved being one. Throughout her admittedly two short years as a mother, Cheryl started to realize that there wasn't really enough content on TV geared towards young children at the time. Seeing the opportunity to make a difference and potentially create a pretty profitable IP, Cheryl decided to insert herself into the competition. She stated in an interview, The more I searched, the more I realized that there were not many things on the market that held the attention of a two-year-old. Cheryl decided to go and pitch the idea to her father-in-law. That was when the whole process really began. In the beginning, they wanted to make all sorts of animals come to life on screen, but Cheryl ultimately decided on dinosaurs, as they were her son Patrick's favorite animal at the time. In 1987, Barney hit television for the first time and started pouring molten liquefied kindness into the eyeballs of all of the three-year-olds watching. The show did extremely well right off the bat, winning several awards and accolades while becoming a household name for years. However, behind the scenes and out of the public eye, not everything was really so loving. Nobody really anticipated the violence and hatred that would result from such a loving and wholesome character that couldn't really be controversial even by the biggest leaps in logic. Many found the character to be annoying and corny, but the level of hatred that came about was unprecedented. Not only did Barney himself and the actors behind the show come under threats, but Cheryl and her family, especially her son, took a lot of the heat as well. Bob Singleton, the guy who composed the theme song for Barney, the famous I love you, you love me that I'm sure a lot of you remember, had threats made against his life constantly. At one point, he was even doing a radio interview only for callers to phone in and voice their opinions that they wanted to see him dead, saying things like, Man, I'd love to get my fingers around that guy's neck. Bob was flabbergasted by the response, saying, I was surprised that they felt like they wanted to do me physical harm. I actually got death and dismemberment of my family emails. That was a terrible time. After a few of these incidents, Bob actually had to unlist his phone number and go dark for a while. Another Bob, Bob West, who provided the voice of Barney from 1992 to 2000, said that he would get constant emails from edgy middle school kids who were, as he put it, absolutely hateful. They were very explicit and very violent. One of them asked, are you the Barney that I stabbed and shot outside of New Orleans? They went on to say that they were going to find me and kill me. In 1993, the threats became real when a group of three boys, albeit young, 10, 11, and 12, attacked a man dressed up in a Barney suit at a mall in Texas. Another man was arrested on assault and battery charges against another Barney suit wearer around this time as well. The efforts to get rid of Barney actually got more and more organized as time went on. For example, a father started an anti-Barney newsletter and a group of college kids organized events where they would go out and destroy Barney merchandise. 
There was even a live-action roleplay event organized called the Jihad to Destroy Barney, in which people would get together and pretend to be super soldiers that were fighting a war against the monstrous dinosaur. The previous leader of that particular group was in the middle of college when he founded the original website for the event, which was actually one of the first 15,000 websites ever even created. And yeah, this is, this is the guy behind all that. It was a movement started by college kids who found Barney to be really, really annoying, he said. With all of the violence and even more threats of violence, Cheryl Leach started becoming worried about what might happen to her family, particularly her son Patrick, who was still young. The woman who babysat Patrick at the time was told, just don't let him out of your sight because of the level of hatred towards Barney. But even with these worries, Cheryl was still spending more and more time with Barney than she was with Patrick. Things with the young boy weren't going too great. As Barney got more popular, his mom gave more and more attention to the fictional character than she even did to him. In a way, Barney was the new, younger sibling who was taking all the attention. Cheryl herself said, To him, Barney is like a sibling, and he has kind of a love-hate relationship like all siblings do. Stephen White, the head writer for the show until 2005, said, Barney was like another entity in the family competing for attention. I can imagine that Patrick wouldn't be crazy about that comparison. But can you imagine having a sibling rivalry with a large purple dinosaur? The founder of Barney History Fans said, After all the years of Barney bashing, threats, and lawsuits, it really was like a slap in the face for Cheryl. She'd spent so much time and energy building this character, and I think it was starting to take a toll on her. I think all of that had to be rough on her marriage to Jim. According to the family's babysitter, Patrick began feeling increasingly lonely at home and disconnected with reality as he watched his father fall deeper into depression and his mother spend more and more time with an imaginary dinosaur. Cheryl's husband, Jim, wasn't having a good time with all of this, to say the least. When Cheryl left home to practically live in a corporate headquarters out in Dallas, Jim was left to be a single father to their kid without much life of his own, leading to worsening depression over time. I think the success of Barney probably did damage the family dynamics, said a friend of the family. Then, in 1997, after years of souring marriage, the couple decided to separate. In 1998, things got even more complicated. Patrick ended up getting a brain tumor. It was benign, but it was still going to require surgery. Cheryl decided that it was time to quit the show and spend more time with her son. She sold the enterprise to HIT Media Company for $275 million. It goes without saying that they were going to be fine on money from then on out. But still, Cheryl moved herself and Patrick out to the Turks and Caicos Islands and opened up a restaurant, even having Patrick work there with her. On the outside, it might have seemed like things were finally looking up, but that was far from the case. One of Cheryl's colleagues said that Patrick was a child that was raised with basically anything he ever wanted, but there was a lot of hidden dark past that followed him. A family friend added, I think that the fact that she created Barney probably gave them a lot financially, but there's a good and bad with everything. Cheryl and Jim's divorce was finalized in 2001 when Patrick turned 18. Jim did not take it well. Shortly after everything was said and done, he ended his own life. Everyone knew that he definitely wasn't taking this very well, but nobody knew exactly how bad it was until it was too late. After that, Patrick and Cheryl decided to move back to the US. Now, Patrick had nothing but a mother who kept herself busy despite being a multi-millionaire, a dinosaur for a sibling, and a father who was no longer with him. He got more and more unhappy as he had to undergo more surgeries for his brain tumor. Around this time, he got heavily into marijuana as it was the only thing that could really calm his emotions down and get him into a better mental state. Living under Barney's shadow took a massive toll on Patrick throughout his entire life, well into adulthood. This was when everything hit a fever pitch and Patrick was involved in a potentially deadly altercation with a neighbor that would leave the whole rest of his life in question, even facing a possible life sentence. Barney was officially cancelled in 2009, mostly bringing an end to the character's television presence. People were hoping that maybe things would be easier on Patrick from then on out. Patrick and Cheryl finally settled in Malibu, California. Patrick then continued to live with his mother in the extremely affluent neighborhood. He even had a fiancé and two sons who lived there with him. Life should have been pretty easy now, but it was anything but. 
Patrick had a particularly heated relationship with his neighbor, a guy named Eric Shanks, who lived next door with his own elderly mother as well. Both of the men were pretty commonly seen throwing insults back and forth and getting heated over property disputes. It has been said that Patrick felt threatened by Eric and his lifestyle, although it isn't really clear what this meant. On the morning of January 9th, 2013, at around 9.30 a.m., one of these arguments blew up much more than usual. Eric had walked past Patrick's house, which had a no trespassing sign on the gate. Eric walked closer to the house, up to the gate, to take a look, and then walked away. This was caught on security camera. Extremely angry at Eric, Patrick is said to have driven onto his property in the 27,000 of West Winding Way in Malibu and started honking his horn at the man's house, trying to provoke him into coming out. Naturally, curious and concerned, Eric walked out of the house to see what was going on. This was when Patrick accused him of trespassing on his property, which started an argument unlike any other that they had had in the past. Patrick pulled out a gun, leading Eric to ask, What? A gun? Really? Are you going to shoot me? The answer to that question was yes. Patrick, sitting in his car in Eric's driveway, held up his handgun and fired about five rounds at him. One of these bullets struck Eric in the middle of the chest and exited out of his back at the top of his shoulder. Realizing that he had pretty likely just screwed up his entire life and future, Patrick panicked. He peeled out of the driveway and sped out onto the highway. The police were called, and just a few miles away, he was caught by the police who found that he didn't only have one gun, but two, and he was wearing a bulletproof vest under his shirt as well. This was enough to tell the police that the attack was deliberate and premeditated, at least to some degree. At the very least, it showed that Patrick was prepared to retaliate and defend himself from a possible attack from Eric. At the most, it showed much darker intentions. Despite being shot in the chest from a short range, Eric was still clinging to life when a good Samaritan found him bleeding out in his driveway. The man told him that he'd be okay and used his hands to apply pressure to the wound and stop the bleeding as well as he could. He got Eric into his car and sped out to the UCLA hospital. Eric was in critical condition, but after a while it was said that he was expected to recover from his wounds. Patrick, around this time, was being arrested and charged with attempted murder. An LA County Sheriff spokesman announced that Patrick was able to post his half a million dollar bail and was released shortly after. The police weren't really worried that he would flee and assured the public that they had good evidence connecting him to the shooting, although they were left scratching their heads when it came to finding a motive. Patrick soon admitted to both discharging the gun and critically injuring his neighbor. Ultimately, he was charged with one count of assault with a firearm and shooting from a vehicle. With those charges, he was expected to be sentenced that summer to at least 15 years in a state prison, according to prosecutors. Eric Shanks ended up making a full recovery from the shooting, but he wasn't about to let it in there. In April of 2013, it was reported that he had sued Cheryl Leach for his wounds. Specifically, he was suing her for negligence, saying that Cheryl should have never let Patrick anywhere near a gun, knowing of his troubled upbringing, his anger issues, and his violent tendencies. He may have been an adult at the time, but he was still living under Cheryl's roof, and Eric felt that she should have kept him on a tighter leash, seeing many of his violent outbursts firsthand himself. In May of 2015, Patrick pleaded no contest to the charges against him. In July, he was sentenced to those 15 years that he was expected to get. Although, to the surprise of many, just five years later his sentence was commuted and he was released from prison. With his mom's money and her incredible lawyers, he was able to get set free much earlier than most would have. During the commutation process, his legal team argued that his addiction to marijuana had led to a higher than average paranoia in the man, which, quote, distorted his reality. Somehow, this was enough for the judges to let him go, despite him having brazenly attempted to murder a man just a couple of years prior. After he got out of prison, Patrick went right back to living with his mom, his fiance, and his kids in the same home as before. He got married to that woman shortly after, and is said to live happily with her and his kids to this day. Not too shockingly, he prefers to live a very low-key and private life now. He doesn't show up in public much, and doesn't really have much of a social media presence. Neither Cheryl nor Patrick have ever agreed to be interviewed about this whole ordeal, so it's hard to know how they feel about the whole thing, aside from likely feeling pretty ashamed and embarrassed. While Barney is a good memory to a lot of adults around the world, the character left a more than sour taste in the mouths of the family who originally created him. He may have brought them a fortune, but it very well may have come at the cost of Cheryl's family life, at Jim's life, and at Patrick's sanity. 
Once again, thank you for watching my video. This is one that I've wanted to talk about for quite a while now, but there was really hardly any information to go on until a recent documentary came out on Peacock called I Love You, You Hate Me. It doesn't really delve into the whole murder thing a lot, but it goes into the background of kind of how, you know, Barney was pretty hated at the time. So if you want to hear more about the jihad against Barney stuff and all of, all of that, then yeah, go for it. If you found it interesting, please give it a like, and if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. Oh, and follow me on social media too if you want. If you want to support the channel even further, I do have a Patreon account which I always keep down in the description below. And speaking of which, shout out to the top patrons. We've got Lord Fool, Jim Dowell, Kimmy Leffel, Molina Lee Williams Haas, Motaz Hawk, Impalato, Stephen Jamie Kramer, Max Sword Guy, L, Rain Noir, Pao Yang, April Diamond, Starfade, Astral, Grack, Angie, Rick of Work in Progress USA, Sash Johnson, Marianne McCurdy, Buttery Frankus, LaFrance, Jules Latona, Arctic Cat, Alan Damiani, Adrian Lawley, Marsh, Rensenstein, Kim Peek, Lux Alpaca, Charity, Scoochie Maine, Jackie, and Mark Barnett. You are all better than the best. This has been your host, Kyle. Thank you and good night. In 1987, Barney hit television for the first time and started pouring molten liquid fight. <laughs> Why did I write this? <laughs>